Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be solving another interesting question, which is multi-solver. Now, the prerequisite for solving this question is print all paths, which was just the previous question which we solved in this series of graphs. So if you haven't checked that problem out already, I highly recommend that you do. Moving on to the question that we have in hand right now, which is multi-solver, right? If you look at the objective over here, it says that you are given a graph and a source and destination context, you have to uh, give a total of uh, five paths, right? The very first is the smallest path. Then we have to give the largest path. Then just larger part, larger part than the criteria, which is I would say the ceiling path. Then we have just smaller path than the criteria, which would be the floor of the criteria. And then k at largest part, right? So we would be given criteria k, source, destination, a graph, right? And we have to print all of these five paths. So let's see how we can do that, right? So if we take this input output test case over here, and if I if I make the graph that we have, so we have seven vertices, right? First of all, we have uh, five of these, then we have these two, right? So if we go back over here, we look at the entire input right this wasn't our entire input our entire input is this much right so let's do one thing let's do one thing let's make our very own graph right what we can do is make our very own graph so if i delete this let's suppose i have a graph which is zero one right then i have uh, three over here then two over here then one and two are connected then three and four are connected four and five are connected five and six are connected and four and six are also connected right and each of these edges have weight right so in this question we would be working with weights as well up till now we have only worked with source and destination and the connection between each and every node right now we are also interested in the cost of the edge so if i write the cost let's suppose this was 10 this was 10 this was 10 and if this was 40 this was 2 this was 3 this was 8 and if this was 3 again then this would be my graph right now in this graph if I take as input, let's suppose I would have source as zero, my destination as six, and uh, what I can also have uh, is a criteria, right? So if my criteria was 42 and my k was four, right? So what I have to find is five different types of paths, right? So what I can do is I can just print all the paths from source to destination, which we already did. If you remember the previous question, which is print all paths, which is a prerequisite of the question, we printed all the paths from a source to destination, right? So I can already assume that you, you all know the uh, question print all paths. That means we know how to print all the paths from source to destination, right? The only difference from that question is that in this question, we will be also accounting for the weight of the path, right? So what do I mean by that? If I evaluate the path 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? So if my path is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, then the weight of this path would be 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 30, 30 plus 2, 32, plus 3, which is 35, plus 3, which is 38. So this entire path has a weight of 38. All right. So this is my weight of the path and this is my path itself. So if I take another another path, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, right? Then I would have, I would have path as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, right? Directly from 4 to 6. Then this would be, this would be having a total weight of 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30 plus 2, 32 plus 8, 40 right so the total weight of this path would be 40 again if i write for another if i this would be at 40 right if i take blue line right so if i have 0 3 4 5 and 6 right 0 3 4 5 and 6 if i write this 0 3 4 5 and 6 this would be having a total weight of 0 3 40 plus 2 42 42 plus uh, 45 45 plus 3 is 48 right so a total weight of 48 right then the last one which i should draw from black one which is 
zero, three, four, and six. So four plus two plus eight, right? Which is fifty. So we have zero, three, four, and six at fifty. So these are all of my paths, and these are weights of those paths. Now we already know how to do this in print. So print, print all paths. We already know how to do this. All we have to do is call for our neighbors, get all the paths from our neighbors till the destination, attach ourselves at the end of all of those paths, right, and print them when my source is equal to destination. I have to take care of backtracking as well. Uh, while backtracking in the post order, what I have to do is mark my visited as false so that I could travel to all the paths, encounter all the possible possible possibilities, right? I could travel from zero to three two, right? Okay, okay. This is clear, right? This is something that we can do, right? Mm -hmm. What we have to do in this question though is find the smallest path. First thing, right? Now, if I write this with black pen, I have to find my smallest path. What would be my smallest path out of all of this? The one which has the lowest weight, right? So smallest path in terms of weight. Which one would it be? It would be the one which has a weight of 38. So my smallest part would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, add 38. Then I also have to print the largest path. How would I do that? My largest path is over here, which has a weight of 50, right? Largest in terms of weight, right? Not the number of vertices, right? So 0, 3, 4, 6, add 50. This would be my largest part, right? Now, using this criteria, I have to also print a ceiling path. That means a path which has weight more than 42, just more than 42, right? Which is that path in this case? It is 48, right? So I would print 0, 3, 4, 5, 6 at 48. And lower path which would be the path which has a weight slightly less than the criteria, right? Just less than the criteria. So if criteria is 42, the path would be the one which has a weight 40. So I would have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 at 40. This would be my floor path. Very last thing, which is kth largest path, right? So I have a total of four paths. The kth largest path, if k is equal to four, would be this one right this is my first largest second largest third largest and this is my fourth largest right so if my kth largest path yes kth largest path right which is fourth largest in this case would be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 at 38 right so this should be my desired output for this case right in this question we have to find these paths so what I can do is in the base case, in the base case where I was printing all of these paths in my print all paths function, I can check for smallest path, largest path, ceiling, floor, and kth largest. And I can fill, I can update static variables. Now, if we come back to the code, and if we see over here, we have been given all of these static variables right we have been given all of these static variables right where s path is my smallest path right s path weight is my smallest path weight initialized with plus infinity right right l path is my largest path and the weight similarly initialized with minus infinity again with infinity minus infinity the seal path and the floor path and at last i have a priority queue right now what would this priority queue do it was it will help us find the kth largest path how let's see how how we can find kth largest path right let's suppose i have some integers 4 5 6 right 3 9 8 10 1 and 7 right and let's suppose i say k equals to 3 so that means i have to find third largest element in this entire uh, set of values that I have. Let's suppose these are my weights, right? Let's suppose these are my weights. So what I would do is I would have a priority queue. Now, if you don't know the concept of priority queue, 
if you don't know the concept of priority queue i recommend you to go to hash map of the hash map and heap module in level one itself you would find priority queue right over there and you can watch those videos those are just introductory videos and you would get the idea of what priority queue is how we use it and how we can implement comparable in priority queue and how we are currently utilizing the properties of priority queue to find the kth largest uh, path right so what priority queue does is of course it gives us the minimum value of all the values that are present in the queue so what we can do is we can create a priority queue of size k right a priority queue that can hold a priority queue that can hold a maximum of three elements so what i can do is i can fill all of these three elements inside it so i would have nine one and three and at the top of priority queue i would get the element which has the minimum value so i would get one over here right and i would erase one from inside right so if i go to four what i would do is i would check if four is greater than the smallest element in the priority queue right and if four is greater what i can do is i can add four and i can remove the smallest element that we have over here right and after this my smallest element from here which is three would go on top right then i would move to two and see if two is greater than three no it's not so then i would go to five and see if five is greater than three yes it is so what i would do is i would add five i would remove three from here and i would add five over here right now the minimum of all of these three which is four would get on the top of q so what i would get is four on top of q right again i would go to six six is greater than four four would be popped or removed then six would be added then again the minimum which is five would be removed from here I would go over here then I would check for 7 7 is greater than 5 that means I would remove 5 add 7 and then 6 would be on top right now after I have evaluated all of these values the value which would be on top of my queue would be my kth largest element right Right. So if we see third largest element in this entire array, right? So first largest is nine, then it's seven, and then third largest is six. And that is what we have in the top of our queue. Right. So this is how we get kth largest element using priority queue. So what we are going to do is we are going to store all the weights along with the path inside the priority queue until the size is uh, equivalent to k. And after that, we would be comparing with the peak with the topmost value in the queue and if the weight is greater than that i would be removing it from the queue and adding it back so similar to what we have done over here but with weights right so let's see how we can code this right so the entire code if we come over here the entire code would be similar to what we have done in print all path so we have recursive function over here which is multi solver which has already been created and the input and output has already been uh, arranged for us right all we have to do is write the code inside this recursive function so the very first thing i have to do is write the base case that is when my source is equal to my destination right so currently i'm writing my code for print all parts right so over here where i have put question marks what i would do is i would do something such that i could update the values of these static variables right now inside this as i have a visited boolean over here you can see in the parameters what i would do is i would mark my visited of source as true then i would call for all the neighbors right so edge e in my graph of source and for all the unevaluated or unmarked neighbors which would be in my visited of e dot neighbors when they are false what i would do is i would call for them right so i would call for multi solver and what i would pass is my graph as itself then it's my source which would be my edge dot neighbor now then my destination would which won't change then my visited which would be the same then my criteria which has been provided which would be the same then k same 
Now path so far. If you remember what we did was after the path so far, we updated our path so far with our current source, which is e dot neighbor. When we are calling, we have to add e dot neighbor. If you see over here, we are adding source in front of here, right? What we can do is add e dot neighbor over here, right? So next is wait so far. If we see over here, we have two criteria that we are updating, which is path so far and wait so far, right? So my path so far would get me the path, of course, and my wait so far would carry the wait, which I was marking as at the rate, right? So how do I update my wait so far while calling? While calling, while calling, if we go back, if we look back at the main function, right? In the main function, you can see the wait so far is marked at zero, right? Wait so far is marked at zero. That means the weight of the edge is what is accounted for. So weight so far would be updated with the edge weight, right? Our edge has, our edge has three properties. If you remember the source, the number and its weight, right? So we add the weight of the edge when we are using it, right? The very important step is to mark the visited as false in post order, right? If you don't understand this code, I would again, request you to please, please, please go back to the previous video, which was print all parts in which we have thoroughly discussed the whole concept behind this piece of code and why we are marking it as true and then as false and why we are updating parts so far with uh, the neighbor afterwards so that we get lexicographical order and how this entire code is basically working, right? We have thoroughly discussed it entirely in the previous question. So please, please, please go back to it if you don't understand this as of now, right? Now, this seems fine, right? So what we have to do is update our base case. So when my source is equal to my destination, that means I would have my path over here. Now, what I want is my current weight of the path should be the smallest weight to update the smallest path. So if my weight so far is smaller than my smallest path weight, then what I would do, I would update my smallest path with the, my path so far and my smallest path weight as weight so far, right? Similarly, if my weight so far is greater than largest path weight, again, my largest path would be equal to my path so far and my largest path weight would be equal to my weight so far, right? So these are my smallest and the largest path. Now, if we look at the ceiling path, what does my ceiling path say? My criteria should be smaller than the weight so far, but my current ceiling path should be greater than my weight so far, right? So if my current weight so far is greater than my criteria, then only it can be the ceiling, uh, ceiling weight, right? Ceiling path, right? Then also my weight so far should be smaller than my ceiling current, uh, my current ceiling path weight, right? So my current ceiling path weight has to be greater than the weight so far, then only I would be updating my ceiling path, right? If not, I don't have to update it. So ceiling path weight is equal to weight so far. And my ceiling path is equal to path so far, right? Okay, I hope it's clear. Again, similarly, for my flow, my weight should be smaller than my criteria is the very first thing, right? If my weight is smaller than my criteria, then only it can be my, it can be eligible to be my floor. Now, it can be floor only if my weight so far is greater than the floor, right? If the floor value is too low right now, I can bring it up, right? So my weight so far should be greater than my floor weight, which is floor path weight. Right. Okay. Now I would update again. So floor path weight is equal to weight so far and floor path would be my path so far. Right. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. So we have dealt with smallest path, largest path, weight so far criteria and weight so far for uh, ceiling path and weight so far for floor path. Now what we have to do is uh, maintain our priority queue. So if, if my priority key, which is pq dot size, if it is smaller than k, 
then what do I have to do? I just have to do pq.add. I would create, I would create what? I would create a pair, right? So that pair holds a weight and a path, right? And it compares the weight of uh, both of those, right? And I have a priority key of pair. So I would add that pair. So I would create pair over here. If you don't understand this part, I would recommend you to go back at the hash map and heap module and watch the introduction to priority queue part. And that would make everything clear to you, right? So we can add a new pair. And what would that pair be? The very first thing that I have to pass is the weight so far and then the path so far. So the weight so far. Control Z. Yeah. So over here we have our weight so far and our path so far, right? But what if my size is already equal to K? Else, what I have to do is I have to check if, if the top of my priority queue, which has a weight so far, if its weight so far is less than my current weight so far. And if that's the case, what I would do is I would remove the element from my priority queue. And then I would add, then I would add a new pair to it which would have my weight so far and my path so far. Right. Now, if we try to run this to check and see if there are any compilation errors, we don't get any compilation error. It is accepting. So let's submit it for all the test cases. And uh, it submits for all of them, right? We are getting 10 out of 10. So if you, Look at the code over here that we have written. If we look at the code over here, if you observe the entire code of this part is exactly same to previous question, which is print all paths, right? Even the base case is same, right? The only part that is different is this, where we update all of our static variables. And even the static variables, if you look over here, this is for finding our smallest this is for finding our greatest, which is the largest one, right? This is for finding the ceiling. This is for finding the floor. This is for finding kth largest. And these were the paths that I needed, right? Now at the end of it, what would happen is at the end of, uh, in the, at the end of all of this, I erase this. Okay. Yeah. If I erase this at the end of this entire function, my values would be stored in my static variables and my static variables are being printed over here. Right? This is how I get my output. All right. So I call for the function, the function updates all the static variables and then I print all of them. Right. So I hope it's clear. I hope the question was clear to you. I hope you understood how it's different. And I hope you understood how we updated the previous question, which is print all paths to uh, the current question, which is multi solver, right? And I hope you also understand how we work with weights, right? So this was the very first question that we did in which we utilize the weights of the edges, right? So I will see you in the next video. Uh, practice well and see you. Bye-bye.